Okay, follow up video uh, to the polymagnet research at Tech Shop, San Francisco. And so you can see I'm rewriting the face of a, of a magnet that I've already done uh, just with the program. It's going to be a while. We've got uh, 241 maxels to be written. So that's going to take some time, as you can see. Uh, and I'm going to let that go for a while. So I'm going to come over here. I've been working on a polymagnet showcase for Tech Shop. And as you can see, these are just a bunch of designs that are functional <clears throat> compared to a bunch of trash that the students have made. No offense, students, but you guys don't know what you're doing. Uh, so this stuff is it's kind of weak. You know, They don't really have a true function. They just have a unique pattern or shape or design. Here's some of mine here. I made some what I thought would be gears, uh, but unfortunately, they're just kind of interesting. <laughs> like most of the stuff in this class. So here's a quick little demonstration of Hoverfield. Uh, Hoverfield is a neat little, get out of your screw, just screwed me. Uh, Hoverfield is a unique design where it attracts, yet when it gets close it repels. Uh, so the idea is that the maxils uh, are smaller than the overall attraction, but when they get close enough they actually overpower the larger fields. So you can squish it down, but it does repel eventually and creates what's called the Hover field. Whoa, can you read that? Nope, you can read it here. There it is. So it's been totally patented by CMR. Um, by the way, that's ferrofluid in my fingernails, guys, so don't, don't mind that shit. Uh, okay, anyway, moving on. So back to the functional magnets, you can see that I've got a hover field of my own, a latch pattern. That's when you rotate it and it opens and then it closes the more you rotate it. And then a little X pattern for like alignment purposes. So let's go ahead and check this out here and then under the ferrofluid. So here's some ferrofluid I have uh, on a glass pane. And here you can see I have a unique pattern where if I rotate the glass pane it actually will cause the fluid to kind of move in a weird way. So I'm just doing a circle there it's flowing. So I'm going to try to separate this if I can. Eh, I almost just made a huge mess. Okay. And really quick, here's another little pattern under the ferrofluid. This is kind of like a... Eh, it's kind of another whatever, you know? Okay, get off of there. Get off. You know what, guys? I'm holding my phone in one hand, and I'm also trying to separate these magnets with my other hand. Okay, so let's look at Hoverfield really quick under the ferrofluid. Hoverfield. Very pretty. So you can see there's like some sort of a star shape right there, and then there's a beautiful south pole line that separates the north poles. Uh, and so, you know, the corresponding pattern, I wish I could show you, but the, I have these little posts in the way. Uh, it would show you the exact opposite pattern where there would be a ring, a black ring where the white space is. Uh, and of course, maybe something in the center is also, you know, white space. So uh, that is Hoverfield. Now let me show you guys the functional magnets. So the functional magnets, you can see here's Hoverfield again. And then... Uh, there is the X pattern. X pattern's really neat with south poles. So I know that I zapped the south poles um, on north facing poles. So it's funny that the ferrofluid is only attracted to north facing poles. So as you look at this, the ferrofluid accumulates on north facing poles on all of these magnets. As you can see, it's kind of flowing here on one. That's kind of neat. You see my reflection? Hang loose, bro. Okay, anyway. Back to this, so you can see the ferro fluid's kind of doing its thing. It's always alluring. You can watch it for hours. I suggest buying it on Amazon for like 15 bucks. Uh, yeah, it's pretty neat. So right now, I'm just kind of showing you guys a three-dimensional kind of gallery of what these uses do. So now that I've done that, let me pull this off, and I'm going to show you guys what it uh, is supposed to do. So. Once again, this is Hoverfield. Uh, this is my own personal program of Hoverfield that I finally figured out. It's a little bit uh, mind-bending. But as you can see, if I get it on the, the one post, I can move it back and forth. And it wants to stay in what's called a tractor beam. 
I mean, I guess that's Star Trekky, but cool. Okay, so if I get it off the post, they immediately snap together. That's why we have to have one polarized plane. So let me go ahead and put it on uh, what I believe now this is the latch pattern. So this is cool, and it may require two hands. So this is going to violently snap together. Okay. So let me uh, prop my phone for a second. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, check it out. I'm going to prop it right here. And uh, please forgive the horrible video editing. So as I rotate this, it, it latches, right? So I'm going to rotate it, it opens, and then it closes. And yeah, I can sit here and do this for hours. But uh, think of mechanical designs that go with that. Okay, and last but not least, we have the X pattern, right? We have this guy, the X pattern. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to align a magnet just like so and then you'll see that it wants to uh, centralize so now <laughs> let's take it back over here to this cool little spot where I prop my phone I can uh, kind of rotate it and the it wants to rotate to the X shape no matter in four different ways so anyway that's that's kind of the idea anyway uh, yeah guys more technology more awesomeness thanks for watching